welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and I should start by saying Happy Halloween to you all. Um, a very festive day today and, and we're celebrating in fine style because well yesterday we had the Graveyard of Schrodinger by F Jam which is a fantastic puzzle and this morning I solved um, uh, what was it called? Tricky Treating or something which is a special puzzle that Jane Street has made for us. Um, that is available on the channel uh, right now but you can have a go at it as well and it's sort of sort of like a puzzle hunty type thing you have to solve a whole load of riddles to create an only connect style wall and then and then go from there I did not find it easy at all but it was it was fascinating uh, and I did enjoy it so I definitely commend it to you anyway what's this video about it's about neither of those things uh, it's called it's it no, it's it's a nun factor by SSG um, and it seems to involve this new type of line I think I've seen this in one puzzle before it's called an anti-factor line so these gold lines basically what is it um, you can have no digit on the line that's a multiple or factor of the length of the line other than one so that line is a six cell line so it couldn't include a six, it couldn't include a two, it couldn't include a three, and it couldn't include a twelve. Aha, no, there's probably no twelves on the line because it is normal Sudoku. Um, but yeah, that, that's how these funny lines work. Um, and this has been recommended to us a number of times and apparently it's absolutely brilliant. So this is what we're going to have a go at in a moment or two's time. Uh, but what can I tell you about? Well, tomorrow, this is the last day of October. Tomorrow is the first day of November. There's a knowledge bomb for you, but that is a big day. If you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, firstly, thank you so much for supporting us. It's it's how we can continue to do the channel. So it's, it, it really does make a difference. And tomorrow we've got a very special patron reward coming out at 4 p.m. UK time, which is Demono's latest sort of novel or novella stroke um, Sudoku hunt. So the idea is that there is a story but to access the later chapters of the story you've got to solve a puzzle. Uh, I think there are six puzzles in all to reveal the whole story so something very good. We uh, Dumono did this a couple of months ago and it was very popular um, so we hope that you enjoy it and as I say look out for it four o'clock tomorrow UK time. That's when it comes out. Um, now I've got a few announcements to do today. Let me start off by saying a very happy 50th birthday to Jennifer over there in Birmingham, Alabama. That's I've never been to Birmingham, Alabama. I'd like to go there. I remember Martin Luther King. I think he wrote wrote a letter uh, from Birmingham, Alabama, if I remember rightly. Anyway, your husband Eric wrote wrote to us, Jennifer, and said. Uh, you'd appreciate a shout out so many happy returns i hope you have an enormous slab of hugely icing ridden chocolate cake today uh, next capoteki it's your birthday and you share a birthday with quill um, who is a character who provides moral support during your solving and i've got a picture of quill here so this is a plushie of Quill, and apparently Quill's having some sushi there. Very well, very well treated plushie. Um, and um, Quill comes from a game called Crush Crush. Now I don't know what Crush Crush is, and apparently there's a spin-off game that Quill is also in called Hush Hush. So I'm sure this means something to a lot of people, but um, all I'll say is that Quill looks quite grumpy, despite the fact that. Um, that sushi looks delicious. Sushi is my favourite food actually apart from chocolate cake. Um, anyway, happy birthday Kapiteki. I hope it's a good one. And then Nameen, it's your birthday, your 38th birthday today and I know this because your husband John wrote to us. Uh, he, he said that you were 38 or as he likes to describe it, 21 for the 18th time. Um, he says, I mean he said he was eulogistic about you, Nameen. He said, you're a wonderful woman, perfect partner, and the most magnificent mother to your one-year-old daughter. And you're having molten chocolate lava cake today, you lucky thing. Uh, have a great birthday. It sounds like you will. Next to Neve from your partner, Jake. Neve likes, to, likes both the Sudoku and the crosswords. This is the sort of viewer we like. Neve, happy birthday. I hope it's a good one. And then finally, to Paul and Michael 
who celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary today. Uh, and Paul watches both videos every night. And if there's a guitar intro, immediately gives the video a thumbs up. Ah, I didn't, I haven't done one of those. Did I haven't even, I could, hmm, I will. I, well, I played this as an intro the other day. I'm still, I'm still learning most of it. But I'll, I'll give you, I'll try and get a thumbs up from you, Paul. Uh, what is it? Um, this, this could be bad, actually. Let's see. Why worry? But the world could do a bit of that, I think. Anyway, hopefully, sorry for all the banging, that might have secured me a thumbs up from one viewer at least. Anyway, let's get on with um, It's a Nun Factor by SSG. For some reason, when I read that sentence, I want to say it's not a factor, but it doesn't say that. It does say it's a non-factor. These are the rules of the puzzle. We've got um, normal Sudoku rules apply. So digits one to nine, once each in every row, column, and three by three box. Uh, digits in cages may not repeat and must sum to the total in the top left corner. So may not repeat. Okay, so these four cells here sum to 22. And what we couldn't do, for example, is put two eights in there, a one and a five, because although these do, I think, add up to 22, um, you've repeated eight in the cage. It wouldn't break normal Sudoku rules, but it does break the cage rule, so don't do that. And then the anti-factor line, a line may contain no digit that is a multiple or factor of its length other than one, and the, digit along, and the digits along a line must sum to a multiple of its length. Digits may repeat along a line if allowed by the other rules. So let's go back to this one. This was a length six line, wasn't it? So this can't have six, two or three on it, but, but I, I didn't realize it had to add up to a multiple of its length. So, okay, I don't think it can probably add up to six, but it could add up to 12 or 18 or 24. So something like that is how that line will have to work. It's a really interesting rule. Um, anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. The first thing that strikes me about this grid, by the way, is nothing to do with factor lines. It's the fact, it's the fact it looks like it's sort of a Ard van der Vatering trick. It looks like it's, it's sort of the inverse, isn't it? Normally, this small square's up there and the big square's down here, but it's the same principle. So it's a principle that tells you, um, you might wonder what on earth I'm talking about. I don't know if it's relevant here, but it's something that tells you that those 25 squares are the identical digits to these 16 squares plus a complete set of the digits one to nine. So there are obviously there's a difference of nine digits between a 25 area and a 16 area and the difference is made up of one 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 two one three one four one five one six one seven etc one eight one nine might as well complete that <laughs> chain of thought um and bah, i've got no idea what that means it is quite interesting though that the real estate that is covered by the lines and the cages is almost exactly the same, with the exception of this naughty little square, which doesn't seem to be covered by either a cage or a line or a given. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if this is going to give rise to a massive equation and whether that equation is going to mean anything. I suspect I suspect not. Can we just do a bit of, um, I don't know whether to, I, I, it's a very quick proof of this. So I am, I'll just prove it just so that we've, we've got it in the bank if we need it. The way to prove that this is the case is to, let's get rid of the orange, is to say, okay, let's highlight the first five rows of the grid. 
Now, we don't know where the digits are disposed within this great big area of the grid. So I can't tell you if this cell is a one or if this cell is a nine, etc. But I can tell you the composition altogether of the blue cells, because obviously each row of a Sudoku must contain the digits one to nine once each. So the blue digits altogether are five sets of the digits one to nine. So within blue altogether, there will be five ones, five twos, five threes, all the way through to five nines. Now, if you look at the final four columns of the grid, let's do those in orange. We can we could describe these columns as well, couldn't we? These columns would contain four sets of the digits one to nine. So the orange digits are four sets of the digits one to nine. The blue digits are five sets of the digits one to nine. Now. If we were to remove this cell from both of those sets, like that, what can we now say about orange and blue? Well, now we don't know what's left in blue or orange because we don't know what this digit is. So we don't know now whether the set of blue digits is five sets of the digits one to nine minus a one or five sets of the digits, one to nine minus a two, because we don't know what this is. But we do know that whatever this is, we've removed it from both orange and blue. So it's still true to say at this point that the difference between orange and blue must still be one complete set of the digits one to nine, because blue had five sets of the digits one to nine, orange had four sets of the digits one to nine, and we've taken the same thing out of orange and blue. And we can do that for all of the orange and blue cells. And if you do that, the difference between orange and blue is still one set of the digits one to nine. So they contain the identical digits, except blue has blue has one more set. Now, OK, one way that you can equate blue and orange, which I'm not going to do here, is you could obviously remove that from blue. If we removed that from blue, then we've just removed a set of the digits one to nine because that's the whole of box one. So that will have the digits one to nine once each in it. So there is in fact exact equality between the digits in blue now and the digits in orange. But that doesn't look as useful to me because I've just, I've got half lines now, which feels like that's going to be yes, less useful mathematically. Um, Right, so what exactly are these anti-factor lines telling us if we do have to use this trick? We've got orange, if we were going to express orange algebra algebraically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, oh, this is, this is it. Well, I don't know that it's it, but this is very important because I actually do know what that digit is. Sorry, I hadn't realized this. The Both of these lines in orange, orange wasn't the best color to pick, was it? Let's just change that to a moment just so we can see the lines. Um, both of the lines are seven cells long. So I don't think you can put a seven on them. Sorry, I'm just checking the rules. That is what the rules say, isn't it? I can't put a factor. I can't put a multiple or factor of its length other than one. Hmm. Well, now I've, t I've got a question. A line may contain no digit that is a multiple or factor of its length other than one. It doesn't mean that that multiple is one, does it? No, I, th I think I might have to, if I've understood the rules correctly, we may have to think about the wording of them. Because the way I'm, I'm just worried that if you could have a, if you could have a digit that was a multiple of one times the length of the line, then you could put seven on the line. But I think the way it's meant to work, I think what it's saying is that the only digit you can put on the line that is a factor of the length is one. And one is a trivial factor of any length of line. 
I think that's what the how these lines are meant to work. I think that's how they worked on the other puzzle I did, which had an anti-factor rule. And that's important because if I can't put seven on a seven a line of length seven, where do I put the seven in box nine? Well, it goes there. And this makes me think that we are much closer to having an equation because now we know that the length seven line adds up to a multiple of seven. So we know that gray overall adds up to a multiple of seven. Because seven, because <laughs> seven is a multiple of seven, seven is a multiple of seven, so 14 is obviously a multiple of seven, and these lines individually each sum to a multiple of seven. So this overall sums to a multiple of seven. Now, well, no, this is not the same up here. That's a five length line. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a six length line. One, two, three, four, five. That was a six length line. So we've got some horrible mathematics here. Because what we've got. How can we express blue mathematically? Blue is. Because we know, right, the reason I'm wondering about this is let me, let me tell you a secret. <laughs> blue, no, no, not blue. There's a secret of Sudoku. It's something I only tell my very favourite people. And of course, if you're watching the video still, you're one of my favourite people. Um, the, the secret is that a complete box of a Sudoku, a complete row, a complete column, because it contains the digits one to nine once each, sums to 45. And that's the secret, 45. So I know that blue overall sums to 45 more than a multiple of 7. And that because it because the difference between blue and grey is one set of the digits 1 to 9, which adds up to 45. But then blue has cages in it that sum up to 39. Yeah, we're going to get a horrible, horrible equation here. We're going to, so, so what we're saying is that grey plus 45 is equal to 39, which is the sum of the cages, plus some, some multiple of 6, plus some multiple of 5. That feels like it's got too many unknowns to me. Let me just think about that for a second. Grey, okay, so grey actually is, grey plus 45 is the same as 14 plus 45, which is 59. So 59 plus a multiple of 7. Which, which is what these lines must add up to. 59 plus a multiple of 7 is equal to 39 plus a multiple of 6 plus a multiple of 5. So the difference is 20 between the sort of you, between the the 59 and the 39. So, li so a multiple of 7 plus 20 is equal to 5 times x plus 6 times y. The only thing that I'm, I'm thinking there is there's no reason is there that this has to add up to 20 or, or indeed any number. I mean, I know this adds up to a multiple of five, but. Ah. Oh, of course, right, right. Got it. Well, I haven't got it, but I've got something. Um, right at the start, we said that a six cell line can't contain a two, three or a six or a 12. 
12 is not the relevant number so there are you have got to put 2 3 and 6 on this line in this box because they the 2 3 and the 6 in box 1 can't go on a gold line because these are both length 6 anti factor lines so this has got 2 3 and 6 on it and that adds up to 11 well the total of this line is not 15 because if it's 15, we'd have to add four more in two cells, and that would be a one three pair, which won't work. We'll repeat the three. So, if this, so this line adds up to 20 or 25, I think. Ah, oh, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. It adds up to 20. It can't add up to 25 because to add up to 25, it would need an extra 14. And if it has an extra 14 on it, it can't have six eight. So it would have to have an extra 5 and 9, and it can't have a 5 and 9 on it because it is a length 5 line. Oh my goodness. So this is huge. So this, this adds up to 20, and that's going to equate our maths. It will make our maths much simpler. But also, the other... Oh no, we can't quite... No, we can do it. We can do it. I was about to say we can't quite work out what the other two digits are because we know they add up to nine, but they can't be two, seven, and they can't be three, six, or we'll repeat the two, three, six that we know are on the line, but they can't be four, five, because they can't have a five on them. So it's one, eight. So this is one, eight, two, three, six. Adding up, let's just double check that. That adds up to 20. But now I think this is much more interesting because now, I'm just gonna double check the maths here. I was saying that this plus 45, which was the same as 59 plus a multiple of seven, was equal. And so now this is, those cells are 59. 59 plus a multiple of six. So, So now what we're saying is that the, the line cells the line cells here because I can cancel out effectively these cells from both sets is what, what, what I'm saying and I'm left with the situation where the blue cells we know add up to a multiple of six and the gray cells add up to a multiple of seven, but they have to add up to the same number. So we've got six X is equal to seven Y, but they have to be integers. So that means that Well, I think that means that I've got to go to at least 42 as the sum because because I can't have a there's no you know six and seven the lowest common multiple is 42 isn't it right so 42 I think I've made a mistake I don't know what I've done wrong here, but 42 can't be the answer to the sum of the gray cells. And 84 is too big. So 42 can't be right, can it? Because these the reason I don't think 42 could be right is that those squares must add up to 38 by the secret. Because the box adds up to 45. 45 minus 7 is 38. 38 and we're going for 42 there's no well those minimum they could add up to is 12 if they were each a one two three triple and if if we go to 84 84 is 84 is almost two complete boxes I mean, you could have six, eight, nine there, and six, eight, nine there, which is forty-six. Oh, then no, that does work. Oh, that's it. 
Oh, that's, that's just ridiculously clever. That is ridiculously clever. SSG, again, take a bow. I think this, I think I had this experience with your last puzzle. That is absolutely amazing. So, so because we know 6x has got to equal 7y and we need something therefore, the, the, these, these have to add up to a multiple of 42 in order that we can have an integer solution to that equation. My initial reaction was you couldn't do 84, but you, I think you just can. Because if that's 689 and that's 689, let's just double check this. That is 46, which means I need another 38 to get to 84. And that's exactly what I have here because I take 7 from 45. So it's 84... Yeah, okay, well that's that's great. How do I do it up here? <laughs> that feels really complicated for some reason. Um I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. I'm not sure off the top of my head how I dispose digits within that blue section. But I, I can at least do some Sudoku now because 6, 7, 8 and 9 in box 5 have suddenly become very difficult to place. I think... Well, they've got to be in this 2x2. Two two. So let's put that in. How many of them could I put? Well... Oh, here's a good thought. Actually, it's a really obvious thought, but it's a good thought. You can't put six on the six cell line. So six doesn't. So six is in the cage. And you can't put. So this must be an eight or a nine, mustn't it? Oh, hang on. Why have I got. Why do I look at that and see that as a quadruple involving a seven? When there's already a seven in the box? It's because I'm absolutely crazy. But it's still the same effect. I've still got to put three of the digits in here. And that's still problematic because I can't put 8 and 9 with 6 in the 22 cage because that would add up to 23 already and we can't make this square minus 1. So that square is 8 or 9. One of the high digits is in here. Uh, okay, uh, one of the high digits is in here. Actually, how do I do this? <laughs> oh, I see. No, it's it's even cleverer. It's even cleverer. Where is six in this box? This is a this is absolutely remarkable. This is. A, I did a puzzle, the effervescence, the other day that just was sort of jaw dropping. I mean, actually, yesterday's puzzle was jaw dropping clever. This is. This is just ridiculous. Six in this column can't go on the anti-factor line. It can't go in the 22 cage. There's already a six in it. So six is in there and that's a two six pair, which means that's not a six. So now there's a two down here. And that means there's a two there. And I can do the same trick here, can't I? These lines, these bl lines in blue, are six lengths of line, lines of length six. So the six in this box is in the nine cage. So that's a three six pair, which means that's the six, right? So that's the six. I've got one of eight and nine in here. Hang on, where's my eight nine? I want that to be one of eight and nine in here. That looks like an eight nine pair. That's not what I'm trying to say there. Um. 3 must be in one of those squares. How long is that line? 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, 5. I thought that looks like it's a length 6 line. It's a length 5 line. So that can have a 3 on it. That can't have a 3 on it. That is a length 3 line. So 3 is in one of those squares. Um, okay, so can we narrow down what's going on in here then? 
So if this was 14, we'd need another 8 without using a 6. So it'd either be 3, 5, which would have to have a 3 here. Or 1, 7, which would have to have a 7 here. But this could be 6, 9 for 15, and then we need 7 more, which couldn't be 1, 6. So it would be 2, 5, which would be 2 here and 5 here. Or 3, 4, which would be 3 here. Uh, 4 here. So there seems to be quite a lot of ways of doing that. But it's probably not for reasons I don't understand. Um, okay. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled by this. I mean, how can I, can I go much further? I've got, can I, is it something to do with sevens, eights and nines in this box? Is there, there's no restriction. This is a length six line, so it can have sevens, eights and nines on it. And we can repeat this digit on the line if we want to, I think. So that doesn't seem to help us, does it? Um, is it something to do with sevens? Or... What are those digits? I suppose we do know what they are, don't we? They are four, five, seven, and nine. But they, they must be able to go on these six length lines, otherwise there's a real problem in the world because um, I couldn't put them anywhere in the box. So we've got this six. Oh, sorry about this. I'm suddenly very confused. What is the answer to this then? I don't... I don't think it's these lines, is it? A length 3 line can't have 3, 6 or 9 on it. Oh, I see. Oh, gosh, it is that. Oh, it is. That's so simple. Oh, no. I think that's been available for ages. I think that's been available. For... Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't notice this at all. This line and it... oh, and this line. They're both 258. Uh, it's really lovely. It's, it's a lovely idea. Ah, oh, this is so sick. Right. So let's th let's examine the length three anti-factor line, which we know adds up to a multiple of three. That's the key. That's the crucial thing, because by the rule, it can't have three, six or nine on it. And therefore, we're selecting from digits that either have a remainder of one when you divide them um, by three digits like one, four and seven or digits like 2, 5, and 8 that have a remainder of 2 when you divide them by 3. Well, so how are we going to fill this line if we can't put 7 on it? If we put, if we put two digits, you, 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 the point is you can't put 1s and 4s on this line anymore because you're never going to be able to get to a, the line adding up overall to something that has a remainder of zero when it's divided by three, because you could put a one, one of them, a one or a four, then you could have a two, five or eight, and then you'd have the, the perfect mod, you'd be mod zero, but the last cell will have to be a three, six or nine then. So the only way of doing it is actually to use all of one modularity, all of the ones that have remainder two. And therefore you get back to mod, effectively you get back to zero mod three, don't you? Um, and these are not 8, so that's 8. So hang on, so now there is an 8 on this line in one of those two squares, which means that's not an 8. 
And we know that because we know that 6, 8 and 9 is just by Sudoku in this box. So these squares are now 1, 3, 4 and 7. But this line, oh, <laughs> that's a length 5 line. So that can have, oh, but 3 can't be here apparently. So these are 1, 4, these are snooker maximums. And the same is true of this line, isn't it? Again, it's, it's just identical. Lo in fact, it's very identical logic. The 8 has to go at the end of the line. These have to be, ah, these have to be a 2, 5 pair. So that has to be the 2. That has to be the 5. So these are not 2. Does that, does that do any more magic in terms of, yes, that does magic with 8 in this box. So 8 is now on this line in one of two places, which means that is a 9, which means 8 is now needing to be placed in this box. It's got to be here. So we are now at 14, aren't we? So we're going to be able to do some thinking about that in a moment. 9 is there. It's just Sudoku, look. Don't tell me. 9, nine can't go there. So this, this has become an 8-9 pair at the top of column 5. I am lost in admiration for this puzzle. It really is absolutely extraordinary. Oh, I was about to say you can't repeat 9 on a line. That's total nonsense. In fact, we can see 9 is repeated on this line. Um, all right, so what do we now know? We've got 14 in here, so we need 8 more. We can't use 2 and 6. So if we're using 1 and 7, this would be a 7, and this would be a 1. And if we're using 3 and 5, that would have to be a 3, and this would have to be a 5. And that looks okay, doesn't it? I can't see immediately why that doesn't work. That can't be 8. That can't be 8, just using the the eights here and here. Um, okay, so let's check this line then. This line has one, three, four and seven as its options and it's a length four line so we can't have four on it. So we're looking at ones, threes and sevens. Um, these can't be nines. I suspect there's a lot of Sudoku that we could do here. Actually, it feels like feels like there is five in this box. Is that somehow restricted? It's got to be up there, and it can't be in that one. So it's in a U pen domino. No, it's not. It's in the corner somewhere because of the five here. So five's up there. Five is in one of those three squares in box two, which means five is in one of those two squares in box five. Hmm. Uh, okay. Don't think that's quite enough, is it? Not sure. <laughs> uh, Seven isn't seven is an annoying length of line. It wasn't for the break-in, but it's an annoying length of line now because basically it can have anything on it. Um, is there a reason we know what that is? I don't think so. Is there a reason? Oh, look, seven. We do know is in one of those two cells now by Sudoku. This is a that yeah, this line can have a seven on it, but those two squares now can't be seven. So this has come right down. Can it be you no know, four and five are fine? Stop worrying about what can go on this line. We may have to do maths on these lines at some point. Oh yeah, because individually they do have to add up. To, they do have to add up individually to a multiple of six, don't they? I wonder if that's important somehow. Two and five in these cells. Uh, 
well indeed and eight of course that is also down there so if these digits were the same there would be a fourth digit down there that would be a six or a nine. Oh, can you I don't know if you can hear but Maverick is doing a low fly past um, well done Maverick right so how do we do this then oh oh it's that simple sorry this is easy um, this box where's the three in it well it's in one of those squares where's the three in this box it seems to be in one of those squares so the three in this column is up here somewhere and if there's a three up in there somewhere it can't be there so that's got to be seven that's got to be one that gives me a four seven pair here this squares a two or a five by just the logic of row five that's no longer a seven this column may ah oh, one comes out of these squares seven oh seven i get a three that's a, that's a <laughs> that's fine i'm pleased to get it um but it does knock threes out of the corners which is the reason i was just slightly nonplussed by that one seven comes here three has to be there now um now hang on five looks why have i got a five pencil marked into these squares well that is a five by sudoku now i don't know how i did that so that's got to be a two that's got to be a four so that's got to be a 2, that's got to be a 5. Um, and if that's a 4, 7 pair, this is a 1, 3 pair. And we know what these digits are now. They've got to be 5, 7 and, five, seven and 8, I think. And we know that one isn't 8. So, okay, we'll leave that pencil marking alone. now have we have we learnt some more things well it definitely feels feels like that was that was progress doesn't it where's four in this column it's got to go there which means that's five that's seven that's great okay so now we get a five eight pair here we can take five out of these squares five is not here anymore by sudoku we need to put one in this box, don't we? So this is a one, three, five triple. Let's just put that in in central pencil marks. Take the five out of there. See if that gives us anything. Might well do, but I'm not seeing what it is. Um, what about that? Ah, seven is seeing that square. So that's a four, that's a nine, that's a seven. Good grief. It's really quite astonishing how this keeps going from a sudoku perspective oh now we can check look at that i filled this line now we know that this needs to add up to a multiple of six otherwise we've made a mistake we've got 18 plus 24 which is 42 which is indeed a multiple of six so this line must add up to 42 as well because we know that that line or the lines down here added up to 84 so oh, we've we've already basically established it as well we've got 18 uh 31 and 11 42 perfect <laughs> okay well the world the world is making sense uh so this is a one two four triple uh that's not a four so one, two, three, and six. Ah, but what can we put on this bottom line? This is a four cell line, you can't have two on it. So that, oh, that can't be a three. That, this feels like it's done something to this line, doesn't it? What, we need this line to add up to, ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, again. Again, absolutely beautiful good grief right that can't be a one because if that's a one those three cells are zero mod four if you divide the line by four you're, you're, you've got 16 on the line then if this is a one six and seven go here plus three is 16 so the line is perfectly balanced it is a multiple of four but we have to add a one three or a six to the line and none of those digits are divisible by four so the line would break so that's seven that's one 
Now, now again the line is divisible by four, which means the, oh, bother. Oh, well, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Because how are we going to make these two squares add up to a multiple of four. And I mean, <laughs> my first thought, which I know is mad, <laughs> I'm doing Sudoku after all, was say double six works. And double six does work, but you can't put two sixes in column three. So double six doesn't work. So I know obviously a single six with a, either a one or a three is not divisible, but one and three are. So this is one, this is three. That sort of gives a weird little X wing of which puts one and three over here. Look, oh, wah. Okay, but the, okay, I was worried that was a deadly pattern, but actually it might not be because there's all these lines involved. So there's a one three pair here. Um, it's just where one and three go in this column. Right, what's that done? I give me a two here, and it's going to give me that digit, which is now a six. So we can tell oh, that's a six, and that's two. So we can take six out of every cell on this funny line. We can take two out of those squares. That's a one, three, five, eight quadruple in the top row. What a strange thing. Well, that gives me a nine there. That's an eight. So this isn't an eight. And the digits we must be hiding in the corner over here must be a five, seven pair, I think. By the logic of Sudoku, that's what that seems to imply. Which is fine. Okay. Now, can we do more with that? Oh, well, now we can ask where 5 goes in this. Oh, hang on. Hang on. No, I've made a mistake. It's not 5 and 7, is it? No, I've done something wrong. What have I done wrong there? I think... I think I thought this was five seven. That's total rubbish. It's four. It's four seven. Because look, I've got five in this in this quadruple. Indeed, the five has to go there in the quadruple. So that's five. That's five. This is a four seven. Oh, another deadly pattern. Again, this line must be here to stop this being a deadly pattern. Uh, this is not five anymore. So there's now one three pair, which makes puts that two in there. So I've got a one three pair in row three. So I need two and six into those squares. They're both on a line as well. So we've nearly filled this line actually. Do we know, we know what that digit is. That digit is nine. So nine is not there. And this line, we, we must have to do maths on it. Now we're at 17, aren't we? So we need these two squares to either add up to three. Well, they can't do that. Or to add up to eight, which they can do just only if this is a one seven pair, which is what it must be. So that's one. So that does the jiggery poker at the top. It gives me a three here, which gives me a three and a one. And we can probably I'm going to get rid of that corner pencil marking now. It feels a bit otios given where we've got to with the puzzle. Um, seven is placed in row eight. We can... What else can we do here? One, three. What's going on in this column? Four is placed in the column. Four goes at the bottom. So this is a uh, six or a nine. Okay, but this this line now, we're going to be able to work out possible values for this square, aren't we? Because we've now got 23 on the line, plus another 15 is 38, 41. And this line has to add up to a multiple of 7. So this is either 1 or 8, and it's not 1, so it is 8. And that is beautiful because that's going to give me that digit, that digit, that digit. That's now an eight. That's a six. That's a two. This is yet another puzzle that should just be preserved in amber in case there is any disaster that befalls the world so that later generations can experience what an absolute what genius walked the earth at this these moments 
This is a four and a nine here, which is done. Look, look, it's going to finish. Please, please don't mess this up. All these ones and threes. I th oh, the five and the eight is done. Which makes that three, that three, that one, that three, that one, that one, that eight. Thought we might get a three in the corner. <laughs> three and six. Six goes down here. And if I haven't made a ricket, that's a two. Wow, please. Yes. Whoa, not many people have solved that. 16. Well, it's quite hard, I think. It's quite hard. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> that is absolutely astonishing. What an astonishing puzzle. Again. Um, that must... Well, I'd be interested to know how many... I know we have a lot of mathematicians who watch the channel. But... That, to me, was utterly beautiful. Uh, I'm not a mathematician. I'm a sort of, you know, hobbyist mathematician. But that... There is just something absolutely exquisite about that. I, I loved it. Um, hopefully that came across. Let me know in the comments how you got on with this. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind, and especially on this occasion when they praise to the, praise to the heavens, SSG. Fantastic.